Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Creative Work Hour podcast. Today is November the 26th, 2024. My name is Greg and in the room we have Alessandra, myself, we have Devin, we have Bobby W, we have Dr. Tamika, we have Andy, we have Bobby B, we have Bailey, we have Shadows Pub, we have Ella, and we have Adrian. And this month is the National Podcast Post Month, and we are doing an entry. This is our entry for today. I'll ask a question just to get the conversation started, and we'll see where we go from there. So my question today, is there a creative experiment that you've always wanted to try? And I'll go to Alessandra. Okay, I'll, I'll start because you asked me, but I'm a little bit like that emoji. I don't know what we call it, but it's the one where the hands are over the face and like one eye is peeking out. So my creative experiment would be to sing in public. Now I've done that before, but it's been a minute and let's just say that my blue jean size was much smaller. <laughs> so there we go. Thank you. How about you, Demon? Thanks, Greg. I think it would be probably doing some sort of immersion, some sort of retreat. Writers are really good about this. I'll have a week-long writer's retreat, poetry retreats, where you're really just writing and thinking about writing and talking to other people about writing for an extended period of time. I've always thought that would that has to be a really good creative experience and kind of help you level up. Awesome. Andy, how about you? Well, I've been thinking about filming, you know, doing a film of some kind, you know. It would be really interesting. That's an expression I haven't done, you know. So that would be really exciting. I've done theater and musicals and stuff like that, but not film. So that would be my experience. Thank you. Bobby B, how about yourself? I have yeah, prepped up to where I'm about ready to get on stage for a uh, a five-minute moth. So uh, I've actually thrown my name in the hat twice. It didn't get picked, but I am definitely right there. So that'll be it. Thank you. Bobby W. I was grappling with this question, but the only thing I can really think of is I'd love to be able to run a marathon. I couldn't run a marathon if I tried. Neither could I. <laughs> could try, but it wouldn't uh, wouldn't get off the ground. Bailey, how about you? I don't know if there's any new things I would want to try, but I th guess I would just want to finish a book I'm writing. <laughs> that would be good. That would be good. Shadows, how about you? Now yeah, let's see. Since I consider it a public service not to sing, so that that's off the table. But don't do acting. I guess the thing that I just started is probably it, which is creating a database to integrate into a website. I've done a lot of websites, but I've never done a di dynamic one that uses a, a database. So I guess that'd be it. Ella, how about you? I would love to learn to play the bagpipes. I am about 70-80% Scottish, if not more, and I've always wanted to learn to play the bagpipes. I know several other instruments and I sing, but that is one experiment I have never undertaken. I don't know. I just keep poking at it. I'm like, I want to try it, and then I just never actually go out and get a chanter and start trying, but at one point, maybe. That is my dream. Wow, that would be so cool. Adrian, how about you? It's actually brought up something that I totally forgot that I always wanted to do. I haven't done since I was a teenager, which is, it's not really like a rap battle, but what we used to do, because 90s was big on, you know, rap, which to me was the same thing as poetry. It's just in a different form to talk about what was going on in Black people's lives and what they were facing. And what we used to do is my friends, we'd all sit in a circle and we'd pick a topic and we'd do three or four verses. And then the next person would have to continue with another three or four verses another three, four verses, and we just go around. And I love to do that now because I think rap has really gone way, not, I don't know, I, it might sound old, but, but you know, everybody says that about the music, right? Like in my day, but I think that it's kind of changed a lot, but we need to get back to what, what, I, what it originally was for, was for self-expression, right? To actually uplift people, talk about what's really happening. And to do that with maybe like kids or teenagers, because it helps also with you to be able to increase your vocabulary increase the way to self-express yourself through through words and to communicate those in a different way right awesome dr tamika how about you i think i'm doing it right now in architecture school <laughs> and you know making it through 
hoping for the best, but, you know, trying my best. And I'll continue to work on it this hour. Fantastic. If I had to answer that question, I think I would say I've always wanted to try my hand at acting. We have time for another quick question. What role will creativity play in the coming years, do we think? Alessandra. Oh, it's my guiding light. But it's not that the actual actually doing the creating is the guiding light. It's the people who are doing the creating are my guiding light. And then when I just kind of look down at what's on my own plate, I'm like, oh, well, if he can do that and he can do that and she can do that and she can do that and they can do that and they can do that, then I can do this thing that's on my plate. Okay. I just can't do it during first hour. <laughs> Dr. Tamika, you have your hand up. Thank you. One thing that, so I attended Harvard for two years and we had a segment where we met with some of the most brilliant minds across you know, the globe. And one thing that, it was an AI business intelligence program. And one thing that one of the panelists stated was, AI can never repay, replace creativity. And I almost challenged that for a second because I'm thinking chat GTP does a really good job when I need it to. But I had to sit down and really ponder and that's the beauty of it. I think creativity will be around for a very long time because AI may not have the bandwidth to fulfill the human capacity to create. So that's my answer and I'm sticking with it. How about you, Devin? What role will creativity play in the world in the coming years? I think the role will be to define creativity, taking what Dr. Tamika said, we will be defining what is human creativity versus machine learning. And that's, you know, quite the uh, unknown frontier. And it's going to be exciting if you look at it from one perspective. It could be an amazingly creative experience as we work with AI to redefine and re-experience creativity. Or it could be very frightening as AI becomes better and better at doing the things we might consider being creative now. So. You know, I think it'll be a little bit of both. It'll be a little little exciting, a little terrifying. We'll have to wait and see. Bobby W, how about you? I'm going to continue that thought with the AI. And I think that as technology advances, human creativity is going to be more and more important. And that human touch that everyone, you know, misses. And that it's going to create different types of communities and different kinds of types of friendships globally that uh, we probably can't even imagine at this point. And yeah, AI terrifies me just from a job perspective. <laughs> There's going to be what, four people working <laughs> in the world <laughs> using AI. <laughs> so I, that's, uh, you know, we'll work to make sure that doesn't happen. Andy, how about you? What do you think? I think we we will define creativity out of our own minds, where we stand and where we take, because we are creative souls, right? Bobby B, how about you? Well, personally, I should be releasing at least one book next year, so that's quite a leap of creativity for me. I'm really looking forward to that. I think AI is going in so many wonderful directions, and some not so, but... I think people are finally realizing, okay, it's a tool and lean on it appropriately. And I, I'm i not afraid of it by any means. Bailey, how about you? What role will creativity play in the world in the coming years? I think that if AI becomes the thing that a lot of us fear and takes all of our jobs and does scary stuff, then I think that human creativity will be a new way of exploring and being useful if ai does take up you know a portion of what we're used to doing then i think that one of the best ways that we can explore what to do next is creativity and just thinking about that alone is a creative act so i think that creativity will always be here and may even become more important in the future shadows how about you well Having worked with it for the last year and a half, two years, AI most definitely can be creative as long as I give it the directions to be creative. It doesn't get nuance unless you actually give it the direction to, to have nuance. Then it can identify 
And I don't know that AI is going to take our jobs as much as people who know AI are going to take them. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Prompt engineering. Ella, how about you? I think one of the things we're going to find is that creativity and human touch is going to be a lot more important. Like I don't find, for example, AI is creative in and of itself. You put into a machine what you want and it spits out an app based on an algorithm that's based on already created works. So I think separating ourselves from that and finding our creativity is going to be even more important. Like you notice the human touch in things just has a value that I don't think can ever be replaced by algorithms. And I think it's just going to be really more valued. We might go through a phase where we really fall into AI and the cheapness of it and different things, but I think there's going to be a resurgence of recognizing the value that the human touch has for each of us. And that's going to be a really important piece on our journey. Adrian, how about you? So my take is I'm actually more afraid of the future when it comes to creativity, because I think it's going to stifle creativity. The way we're going into the digital world, the more and more we go digital, because there is something to touching things with your hands, even as a child, to be able to mold putty, to be able to form things, to write by hand. Even write by hand, you remember things in certain parts of your brain when you use your hands and all the different things. But if everybody is using a computer or touch, we're going to get to a point where we're going to touch, we're going to do voice text. So there's all these different things that we're going to lose from like dancing, all these other things that also help you with trauma. It could also help you with development of other parts of creative, and you're using different parts of your brain. So if we go more into a digital world, you're gonna stop, we're gonna start losing parts of our brain that we normally would use. Right. So I think with that, we're gonna have people that are gonna have to bring us back to playing a mute, a mute, you know, playing an instrument instead of using a digital form of the instrument. Going back to being able to, you know, paint because people know that it helps you with dealing with some of your trauma and some psychological things, those kinds of things. So we're gonna need advocates like ourselves <laughs> to go back to the old school, we're gonna call it old school now, old school way of doing things as part of creativity that will help unlock other parts of your brain. You heard it here first, it's happened again. You've wasted a perfectly few good minutes listening to the Creative Workout podcast when you could have been doing something different. But what about you? Is there a creative experiment that you've always wanted to try? And what role do you think creativity will play in the world in years to come? Let us know. But in the meantime, thank you for tuning in. Come back again tomorrow and we will be here.